Hey, Greg. Mr. Marrow. Not really doing a proper stream at the moment, I guess. I'm just catching up this machine I didn't get to finish last night when I ran out of time. Uh, this is also a 1286, but I don't know if it's the same board. I don't know if it's the same fault. It just seems to get partway through its boot process and apparently dies. It could be the same. Oh, what the heck, man. Yep, 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 great. Facial hair falling into my mouth. That's exactly what I want. Time to shave. I think we're time to get the trimmer out. Might have to start with the weed whacker first. Joseph, Corey, did you get any storms up here? No, no storms. Today. It's in fact it's quite the opposite. It's extraordinarily dry. This might be another twenty-eight fifty, actually. Put the glasses on, Paul. No, no, it's twenty-nine fifty. This is 2915. This is a. This is going to be a. Uh, what do you call them? Uh, GPU killer one. Yep, 2915. You'll be a GPU killer job. Alright, no dramas. I think. Oh, I should have known straight away. The battery is the 2915 style battery, not the 2850. Sometimes you miss the most obvious indicators of what you're dealing with. Yeah, I'm definitely a little more north than what uh, those supercells are running around at. I saw on the news that there was some fairly large hail. Sounds dangerous. Is dangerous, rather. Uh, I feel seriously beaten up today for some reason. And I don't even drink alcohol or anything like that. And, uh, probably lack of water, I would say. Being Halloween, I'm no doubt getting into too much sugar. So that'll be my own downfall there. We know that that is my <coughs> weakness. Sugar and lack of sleep. Let's get this out. Uh, I'm going to take it out and give it a check over anyway, just in case it is something as uh, something other than just the GPU issue. Hey, Abel's. Yeah, I saw that, uh, Greg. That was hilarious. That stuff is just nasty. I mean, you get, sure you might get some gain from it, but really, is it that much of a gain that you need to use it? I mean, you drop in a solid state drive and upgrade your RAM and you're pretty much, you know, you've, uh, I suppose people max out with that and then they say, well, we want to go further. Let's put some liquid metal on our board and kill it. Yeah, that's a good point actually about this. It could be that the drive itself is also failing. I'll have to take that out and do a DD Rescue clone end test. So you're basically doing the two tests in one shot. Because while you're cloning it, you're also testing it. There's a little bit of fluff yeah, on the heat transfer radiators, but nothing too severe. I would say this is probably a combination <coughs> um, of the GPU problem and then yeah, certainly the hard drive would be a major consideration. Considering how comparatively cheap solid state drives are now, it's definitely worth the upgrade. Hey, Macromage, that's Zoltan. Yeah, 
Yeah, Greg, that just sounds like way too much trouble to me. Way too much trouble and other than providing a bit of a psychological boost. I can't see it really improving things that much. At least not under normal applications. Yeah, maybe if you're doing cryogenic levels and you're pushing the CPU way, way beyond its standard level. Okay, okay this is stuck again. Oh, well, wow, that one stuck so much it pulled it clean out of the socket. Also, I have got a timer running to make sure I don't go over two hours. I did want to do a fancy Rube Goldberg type uh, machine that did nothing, but in the end I relented and used my iPhone. Some would say that's a Rube Goldberg machine. Hey, Hectic. Okie dokie dokie dokie. So, GPU fix on this one. Uh, let's see. I'll just find my GPU killers. that someone in another discussion group is not getting a UEPS for networking install of $5,000 of gear at home. Yeah, that's a little bit crazy. I mean, UPS isn't going to cost that much overall. I mean, what, a couple of hundred dollars and you just have a entry-level UPS go a long way towards protecting things. I just realised he's updated the picture on this to use the new short distance, short distance jump. Actually, we'll give the board a bit of an inspect inspection first, just to make sure that you know we haven't missed anything as well. Uh, camera needs to be turned on. As you can tell, I've only just come into the workshop today. This is technically early morning for me. And let's see the multi everything's all mangled right now. Multimeter, there we go. Let's get some focus. Should do the trick. Should I take the speaker board off? Just in case there's some corrosion hiding underneath there. Like I said, I don't want to do this repair only to find out that there's a whole bunch of corrosion somewhere that I missed. It looks primarily like it is simply just dust. These things are pretty damn easy to use. So it's basically just drop that in there, solder it on, run the one little connector wire to a test pad there and then run a slightly longer one around to the other side. Greg, I, f I found when it comes to protection, if something is truly important then I prefer to use a uh, proper isolating inverter 
So in that way, you are perpetually running off the battery, never off the main supply. I mean, it costs more and it's less efficient, but you do get exceptionally good protection. I used to have one. I had a three kilowatt one uh, until one day it exploded because some critters got in there. Thankfully nothing happened to the computer side of it, the output side. But I think I had something in the region of 12 batteries in it. That thing was rather heavy. The machine looks clean, best I can tell. <laughs> okay, let's get this thing soldered on there. It looks like we have to clean that up a little bit. Just get the dust off. Actually, the right soldering tip on. Um, Hector, basically, this being a 2915, all the, uh, how could you say, instability and unpredictability, all that sort of stuff, it's primarily because of the GPU issue. Uh, so, what we're doing here is this terminates the the uh, external yeah yeah the external GPU and forces it to run on the Intel CPU internal one yeah I'm making a botch job of this I'll clean this up in a second I really should be putting some flux on here wow I feel like I'm half asleep there we go I'm just leaving some liquid metal there for the next person. Yep. That was daft. Right, let's try that again, shall we? Yeah, Hectic, that's right. It's. Yeah, it just forces it to forever use the Intel one. It's a little bit more than that. This particular system here, it reprograms the um, settings so that it works even if you upgrade your OS or anything like that. And it also resolves the problem that a lot of the bypass systems have, which is they don't always support the brightness control, whereas this one does support brightness control in High Sierra onwards. So it is a little more expensive than doing it other ways, but it's it's a comprehensive solution. <clears throat> now, fairly sure. I'm going to have to go to the website to remember this. I never remember which. I have a feeling it's that test pad there. But uh, better I go to the website. Yeah, it is this one here, so that's good. So the bottom one goes to that test pad. Uh, I can't even get my voice projecting today, I'm sorry. Come on, Paul, come on. Slap yourself around a bit, buddy. Yeah, you know, some days you just feel like you just don't have the energy to push your voice out.
Oh, how's it How's it going? Just saw you there. You're here a little too intermittently, so I don't really tend to remember to look for you. A blue dog run. Need some flux on that Hershey's top there. It's a little bit too much flux. Hey Christian. Yeah, what is the time? Yeah, quarter past quarter past four in the afternoon here. Well, no matter what I do, that solder is looking complete crap. Hey, Kenneth McNutt. Oh, so that was the easy one. Now we've got the more difficult one. That's right, and I always keep forgetting as well that I've got to disable the... I'm going to take some bits and pieces off. Like over here, I'm pretty sure there's a resistor I've got to take off from around here. Yeah, it's R8911. Yep, I've got to remove that one. This should be backlight PWM here, so that's where we've got to connect the other wire to. Hath Hello, Hathtra. I uh, can't pronounce your name properly, I do apologise. Just put a red mark on there so I know where I'm routing around to. brushing off the excess dust here. The board's actually in good condition still. Okay, so this is where we've got to go. And we're coming up from here. Uh, 
always have a hard time deciding whether I want to route up and over. What do they prefer to do? They usually like to... It's weird, they like to go up there. Okay, the standard way they like to go is across. What? Yeah, I don't think I'll be going that route. It's a little too long winded for me. We don't get a lot of activity happening up here. I mean, you got your keyboard, yeah, it's. It should be fairly stable. Some of our routing over. Choices, choices. I'm a lot. I'll use my harder enamel wire on this one. Just trying to think how I want to go about it. Hey, Roger Dodger. We're going to cut off the wire already, and we'll, if we're lucky, it will be about three or four millimeters too short. Because, you know, that's, that's the way these things have got to be done. So, what I was kind of hoping for is to. Uh, ah, crack, I can't even remember where I'm going now. Just doing evaluations in my head. <laughs> Everyone's like, hurry up and solder it. Might tack it to the top of that. And basically just float over the top of the board. This is just for the tack, it's not actually the permanent hold at the moment. <clears throat> Was it 36 Fahrenheit in Missouri? Oh gee, we're about 36 Celsius here. Yeah. Deliciously too hot. And when I say that I'm being sarcastic, I, the heat sucks.
Now, Estremi, yeah, I mean, the DOS dude has his option as well. I've just personally, for the, the jobs I do, prefer to use the GMUX. I mean, DOS dude stuff's perfectly good as well. But, uh, yeah, like I so said, I personally, for customer jobs, prefer this particular solution. It's all a matter of preference. Damn it. Holding it at the wrong angle. Boards at the wrong angle. Everything's at the wrong angle. It's better. Yep, that's right, Nusa. Even my tongue was at the wrong angle. See if we can do some cleanups there, get rid of that flux. Just gotta warm it up a little bit. I mean, you'll never get it perfectly clean, but at least if you can get rid of the most of it, then you can be happy about that. Because I really do not want to put these things through the ultrasonic. It's not that I don't believe in ultrasonic cleaning, I mean I do, but a lot of the time you can so easily... Uh, if I don't have to ultrasonic a board, I prefer not to have to. I mean if you look at the job we did last night, we replaced that cap perfectly well, no ultrasonic required, and that was good. I'm just trying to... I want to protect the edge of that wire as it goes around, so I'm going to put a slightly thicker piece of hot glue over it. And I'll need it to get under the wire so that it provides a buffer between the wire and the edge of the circuit board. 
And that way, when it does sort of move around a little bit, because it will be, it will just naturally move just through um, yeah, contraction, heat, hot and cold, all that sort of stuff. just do that and it should put other than creating f electronics fairy floss I really have the there we go that should be a little more sedate uh, it's far more controllable there. Okay. Housemoth, I do use UV for other areas, but for just doing around the corners, I prefer to use hot glue. Just let that cool off. Like I say, it's more just about making it have a bit of a soft padding. The other way I could have done it is you can just slip a bit of captain tape over the edge of the circuit board instead and let the wire run over that. Of course, this is also quite a distance from the CPU anyway, so we're safe in that respect. But like for the endpoints such as this, then yeah, I will be using UV Cure. Ah, now I remember why I don't normally use that solder. Damn it. I used the wrong solder on this particular one. I used my 6040 solder. And the flux that they have in that 64 to solder, it um, basically is like rosin, um, like how rosin just turns into rock. <coughs> Sima, I really can't today, I'm sorry, I just can't. I'm just not feeling with it. I mean, I'm, I'm still getting into the high orange on the VU meter, so I don't think I want to... It's, it's, I don't think it's the loudness that's a problem. It's the croaky lack of clarity. I'm just having a hard time clearing my throat. The upside of this kind of flux is that I suspect it probably doesn't have as high a risk of corrosion issues as, say, the Amtec type flux, where it persistently tends to stay f liquid or jelly like.
All right, time for your shot. Um, yeah, I don't know. It must be over. It's got to be close to over by now. Hard to say. Let's see. Nope, nope. We've still got seven to go. Uh, I don't know how often that updates. Syringe is out of control. I think I'm going to have to find a place with less sunshine for my UV cure to sit around in. I ordered some blue UV cure quite a while ago and well pleased to say that um, as per expected it has not turned up. Okay, give that a moment. Hopefully that cures are all right. <sighs> be nice if you went 25,000 then all of a sudden 100,000. 100,000 would be a delightful number to have. But you got to work for it or you got to you got to come up with something really interesting for people to watch. So that kind of uh, rules me out for a lot of things. What I was using were <coughs> um, any static bags, and then I'd bury the box itself down low in my stack, but it doesn't seem to be quite sufficient. Cap videos, yeah, well, I might get to that point, but for now, I don't really have the time for it. When we do our rescue yard there'll be a lot more videos kind of like when I was doing that uh, enclosure fence enclosure gate we'll have more of that sort of thing but it's one of those cases where you got to get there first before you can do the things that people will be wanting to watch I guess that's that's pretty tolerable we'll do the same on this one Or maybe we won't. Right. Paul makes a small mistake. Yeah, all I really need to do is just store it in a little cardboard box at the end. <laughs> yeah, nothing fancy, just put it in a cardboard box and that's it. That's all you'd need to do. The incidental level of light coming in wouldn't be sufficient to truly cause problems. Jose, you're welcome. I'm kind of curious how UV cure goes sticking to hot glue. Guess we're about to find out, eh? Okay. Or wrap it in foil. Well, that was another option. So many options. Who'd have thunk?
Well, I hope this works at the end. <laughs> it's going to be bad if I've done something wrong. And what I'll probably do is I'll just place a piece of captain tape over it. Although on the top side it is pretty ugly when you see captain tape. It'd be nice if you could find something like hot glue, but more like, say, a plasticine that you could put the wire on. And I guess that's why when they show it on, on the uh, build here, they've actually got you know, insulated wire as opposed to enameled wire. House of Moth, though, with the lasers, don't they have the problem, though, of the fact that they're extremely, you know, being quite focused? They, you have to sort of fan over the green area quite a bit. Plus, look, I'll be honest, I'm kind of worried that I'd accidentally look into reflections and then I'd be a blind man. So I'll tell you what, you keep using your UV laser and we'll see how your vision is in a year. And then if you're still good, I'll look at it. Not the laser, but buying one. <laughs> okay, that still actually definitely does look a bit squishy. See in trouble when you do a bit of a thick layer of the ultrasonic is that it will sit around and be squishy for a bit. Uh, gives the opportunity to put this stuff back. Clean up the workbench fraction loop. Ah. Honestly, this is what it feels like when you have a hangover as a youth. But all I did was perhaps had a few too many lollies last night and yeah, well that's about it. A few too many lollies. And the um, excess sugar causes your probably your uh, hydration to drop to hell. Yep. Fun and games. Okay, we're already almost an hour in. Crikey. That's the other thing here. When people say, oh, why does it cost so much? Well, you know, why does it cost you that much to install the zapper or something? And so, well, you know, it still takes an hour by the time you do everything, set it up. So it, it's not like you're sitting around doing nothing and charging people for 10 minutes work. It's certainly more than 10 minutes work. Clearly on a video it's taking longer than it normally would because I'm gas bagging to you all. But, yeah, it's still an hour's worth of work, one way or another. Lots of water, yeah, exactly. I need to be drinking more water. You know what would be good is if you had just a sheet, like a captain sheet, two inch wide captain sheet that just sat over that. That would actually work well. Yes, I have a sugar hangover it seems. No great surprise, isn't the first one I've had. So this is um, this is the new age hangover series. Excess sugar, not excess alcohol. Excess sugar. Very similar effect. Less puking though, in general. So I mean, to me, that just looks hackish. It's functional but hackish and that kind of rubs me up the wrong way a bit obviously I'm going to trim off the excess ice cream will fix it, sounds like a good idea to me oh, I actually had lollies last night that was the problem yeah, lots and lots of lollies 
Yeah, Paul, that was great. You nearly cut the... Cut the traces. Bravo. I didn't, but I, I nearly did. That's what I'm saying. Yep, just drop some knife on there. I'm not actually touching the circuit board when I do that, by the way. I can't truly say I'm happy with that, but yeah, not to the level that I would really sort of like, uh, hey, do you want to have a look at this awesome bit of work I did? This is more of like, okay, I've done the work. Can we go home now? Supposed to leave, put a little bit more green stuff down, and I took the syringe away. Oh well. Hey, Crazy J. Bye, Crazy J. So I mean, we still have to reassemble it, we still have to test it. And then of course if there's any issues, we have to fix those. Alien blood. David, yes, that's correct. should be done we can hopefully do our reassembly and give it a test 
Waiting, waiting. I was meant to try and use Jim's, uh, Jim supplied a JVC or something like that camcorder. It's a high definition camcorder. And the nice thing about I want to use it for this camera here. Um, the nice thing about it is it has a good zoom ability, like something like 17 times, 20 times zoom, optical zoom, which will mean I'll be able to you know, get a much tighter picture and hopefully the quality will be better than what the webcam's offering. Because I mean, webcams do usually take quite a bit of a, well, quite a few shortcuts in their encoding quality. Okay, that looks good to me. Time to reassemble. Apple butts assemble, roll out. I mean, really. Now, whenever I do get bored enough to watch the Transformers movies and stuff like that, once, I always think, you know, Autobots, you probably should have just died. You didn't evolve. And you've got these ethics that just keep you from evolving. And you're just pulling the sympathy card on humans to try and steal our world and try and survive. Meanwhile, the only reason why people hate the Decepticons is because they're being portrayed as the nasty ones, but really, maybe they're just, there's a backstory that we don't know, and they're actually the nice ones, and the Autobots are the jerks. The Autobots are the Ludites. Maybe the Autobots didn't want renewable energy on their planet, and that's why the planet exploded. Who knows? They're probably like, hey, we need diesel fuel, and we need oil, and stuff like that. We're not going to turn into Decepticons. Yes, totally random subject. Anyway, so it's, it's always irritated me about how the Autobots are all so incapacitated and holding everybody back. I mean, seriously, come on. Learn to fly. But at the same time, I'm also, dis also disappointed in the Decepticons for being so lousy at leaving behind any Autobots. And you've got all these advanced weapons and you can't hit the broadside of a barn from 10 feet away. Maybe they deserve each other. Maybe that's the message. Kind of half expecting someone to rage soon. How dare you say that about the Autobots? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to be fair, they aren't trained to hit. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fair point. Yeah, fair point. <laughs> History is written by the victors. That it is, although these days we seem to have a bit of a bad habit of deciding that we were the um, the naughty ones and we need to repent or something. I mean, I get it. Uh, there are certain things that we kind of think, well, we probably shouldn't have done that. But we did. And so you do the best you can with the situation that we're at. I don't know. It, it just seems to be the flavor of the month to hate on ourselves a little bit too much. What I don't like about it is it doesn't actually end up achieving anything. It just makes, disempowers people, saps their enthusiasm, gets, doesn't help the victims as it were, one bit. 
So it's like in the end everybody loses and we just go back to the dark ages. I mean, the whole, this tidal wave of anti-scientific sentiment, that's, it's kind of terrifying. People out there just wanting to wash their hands of it. It's like, well, all right, I'll accept that. If you don't like it, fine. But um, give us back the iPad and the internet and the medicine, all that sort of stuff. Especially, yeah, there's a bit of a, assumed correlation between science and western type stuff but yeah i mean science was hell the um the muslims were way ahead of us in so many things back in the pre-medieval times they're laughing at us how st how backwards we were so it's definitely not a western thing as such and really, it's just a methodology. It's not a religion or anything like that. It's just a methodology, nothing more. Anyway, it's just frustrating to see it being demonized so much by people. And the worst thing is we let it happen. We let people demonize us using the uh, the result of what it is that they're demonizing. So it's like something went wrong somewhere. Then again, maybe those sort of people have always existed, but thanks to the power of the internet, we're actually able to hear them a little bit too much now. Wow, it's trash and trash coming out of the fans. Yeah, Hath Trail, that's right. Yeah, we haven't really found anything more, um, yeah, better than the scientific method in terms of ensuring progress is legit not based on some voodoo magic or anything like that um, what I mean is based on someone's snake oil as it were it's, it's just a way of verifying that okay this is legit and people can actually use this not just you not just, not just the person claiming that this is a perpetual motion device Well, micromagic fear, I do agree. You know, that's the other thing that has to be remembered is that it's humans attempting to do science. But of course, you're always going to get your biases, your incorrect things. You're always going to get your errors. But in the long run, I guess that's where it all's supposed to work out. And in the long run, someone eventually comes along and says, oh, you know, actually, that's a load of bollocks. You did that wrong. This is how you should have done it, and this is how you end up with a different result. The probably one of the most common fallacies that you do see come up uh, is the perfect system fallacy or the Nirvana fallacy where people sort of go, well, if it's not perfect, then it's throw it all out. We'll stick with what we've got. We'll stick with what our imperfect system now because the one you're proposing is not perfect. Even if it's not perfect at a considerably lower rate. No, sorry. Not perfect. We're not going with it. What's this? On one eBay seller is... Selling a card for five hundred and thirty-four dollars includes shipping. You can buy a new one for two eighty Canadian. <laughs> yeah, eBay is definitely be aware or prepare to be scammed. <sighs> definitely prepare to be scammed.
Oh, Mr. O'Neill, how are you, good sir? All in all, it just seems like we're becoming a bit of a world of Sith people. It's, and Sith people, and you pick a sports team, whatever your position is, and that's it. Doesn't matter how good or bad your sports team is, you will ensure that you will support them to the death, even if someone says, you know, actually, that's not right. But nope. I've already signed up to be a member of that sports team. I'm going down with them. Well, I suppose maybe that's actually a good thing. <laughs> and the other problem is with the rise of social media and things like that is that people make such a lot of noise about their choice. Um, yeah, they invest so much into showing that they're right or declaring their position that should they internally at any point realize that, that they're actually on perhaps the wrong side of that debate they're too invested in it and it's just too much egg on their face to change face and so they'll just go down with the ship which is sad but it does happen a lot so better to die being wrong than to live being told by other people hey remember that time you were wrong and that's the other thing is it isn't helped that the people on the say if we're talking sports teams type of stuff the people on the opposing side if someone turns around and says you know what you're actually right I'm going to come over to your side then the people on the opposing side just turn along and demonise the person that's about to come over and join them and so it's like well well done you achieved your objective as in getting your point across but then you went along and slayed the person I'm not hiring you an L politics more like clown show oh well I mean politics is you know, I was wondering today whether politics is actually any worse these days than it used to be because we do look to back a little bit fondly at our past leaders and sort of go you know they were leaders back then but maybe they weren't maybe it was just the same as it is now um, hindsight has a funny way of filtering things We're just waiting to, what we're going to do is we'll go in, we check to see what uh, processor it's running and then we'll run the valley and see what uh, graphics it's running then to. Yeah, on Newsacat exactly, that, that's pretty much what it has become. It's, you pick your side and you root for them until you're dead. Rusted on, I believe, is the term some people use around here. Crikey, this is slow. Which is a shame, because really, a lot of good gets thrown away because of that sort of positioning. Personally, I would love to see a scenario where you can get to politics becomes more policy based in the sense of you don't actually have parties but rather you just have policies and then you choose on the policy. Now I understand that complicates matters because obviously some policies depend on funding from other policies you know, so it does complicate the issue substantially. However at this point we're not really doing so well so maybe it is time to change to a policy based uh, governing system. I'll be honest, I'm not very strong when it comes to politics, so I probably should shut up right now. Okay, so we're running the Intel graphics right now. Okay, you probably can't see that, but anyway, it's saying Intel graphics. We'll run the valley test, and hopefully it will stay Intel. Yeah, 
the blue dog run that's what i'm kind of thinking is that just our continual exposure of it the lack of um, vetting of posts is also a very big problem like here in australia we have um there's a one-man party uh, called Palmer Party, Palmer United Party. Um, and it seems like his main role in any of el the elections that are coming up is that he will spread a whole bunch of disinformation out there to win the votes through the disinformation, even if it's blatantly false, and even if they know that they're going to get called out on it, it doesn't matter. They put the... Uh, disinformation out there you can't retract it once it's out there and you can't really berate them or punish them fast enough and effectively enough to prevent the problem so they're kind of they're basically political fodder and they get paid well for it by the party and in the end they'll probably just get a slap on the wrist Okay, so we're still using the Intel graphics, so we're set. It's working. Ah, Teresa, come on. You love you love Clive. Good old Clive. So the only other thing I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to take that hard drive. I'm going to clone it on my system. Check to see if it's got any bad sectors. It probably will have bad sectors starting to develop or slow spots. And so I'm going to additionally recommend this person migrates to a solid state drive. But other than that, it seems like the machine is pretty good. It's quite clean. Last night's machine was even cleaner still, but this one's still very clean. We'll test the keyboard while we're here, though. I've got no reason to think that there's anything wrong with this one. Hey, Corey. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. Okay, everything works on the keyboard. That's just a program I wrote that will show up any defects in the keyboard. Or at least hopefully show up defects in the keyboard. Let's see. Better check that the microphone's working. Okay, microphone's good. Okay, Doug. Well, that pretty much does it for the day. How do we go for time? Let's see. Yeah, 45 minutes to go. So we did well. Shut down. And that's it. And that was, um, yeah, a simple enough fix for these 2915s. I feel bad that when I first was getting into MacBooks, I did get a number of these 15-inch machines, and I basically stripped the boards for parts, and it was only after that that I found that we could start repairing them. But um, they're still readily available on eBay. They're probably going up in a bit in price now since people know that you can put these mod chips on them and fix them up. Uh, okay, that's shut down. Brilliant. All right, until next time, you'll take care. Thank you for being here, and I will catch you later. I don't know what I'm going to bring up next. Maybe a hairball. Could be programming, or it could be computer repair. You just have to wait and see. Catch us later.